I'm going to show you a few really important definitions from uh, electricity here. And one of them is uh, when we talk about moving charge. Well, charge itself, it's just a quantity. It's a quantity that different uh, particles can have. And we know that charge is something that's conserved. And that's going to be really important later on when we're talking about circuits, that, you know, these, these charges themselves, these coulombs of charge, uh, don't disappear in a circuit. They just move around. You'll see we're going to do an electricity analogy. It should make more sense then. But when we talk about moving charges, this is really what we have here. I'm going to give you some definitions first, and we're going to use them later in an analogy to show you how circuits can actually work. And one of the really important definitions then is about charge itself. So we're going to define something called I, and we're going to say it's just delta Q over delta T. This is the definition we're going to use here. So this is for this, I equals delta Q over delta T. And maybe uh, then it's a good idea to actually define what everything is. So we're going to define I as the current, which will be measured in as in English people say amperes, in French we say ampères. Either way, uh, so it says I, this is not just one, it's supposed to be an I. Maybe I'll make it a little capital I like this, it'll be more clear. So we'll say I is the current. Okay, so I is the current, it's measured in amperes. Uh, then we have Q, which is the charge, you know that one before, that's uh, measured in, do you remember the unit? Coulombs. And time, I hope you know, is in seconds. So this is just a definition, it's just Current is just coulombs per second. And that's why I wrote it down over here, that the current is just the number of coulombs going by per second. So just like, you know, just counting the coulombs every second. That's what you do. So just so you know, then, another unit of current, then, just keep in mind, could also be coulombs per second. You know, that could also be another unit. Potential difference, I think, is the hardest one uh, for students to understand because it's, it's the least intuitive. So, I mean, to move a charge around, you need to do work. This is the key thing. If you want to take a charge and actually shove it, you know, from a place to a place, work has to be done. Do you remember we have an equation that work uh, done is just the applied force uh, times the displacement. And so the potential difference is the work done per unit charge. So we're going to actually have a definition. Again, you get this one in your data booklet, and it goes like this. The potential difference is W over Q. You get this. You're given this. You don't have to memorize it. I think the key thing is to remember what each of these things means. First of all, we have a V. That's a weird one, right? V is called the potential difference. And we're going to measure it in volts. Do not call it voltage. See, this is how I say never use the word voltage, especially on IB exams. Don't use the word voltage. Use PD instead. In other words, potential difference. The IB will often use PD like this or just potential difference. Do not say the word voltage, even though it kind of is, but don't use it. But it kind of is, but don't use it. Work done. Do you remember what that's measured in? Work is a form of energy. So work is joules. And charge, of course, is coulombs. So you could say another unit then for volts, uh, sorry, see, I, instead of volts, so the potential difference could also be measured in what we call, let's see, it would be joules per coulomb. So that's another way of writing it. See, just so you know, that's another unit of it. Now keep in mind, this isn't very intuitive. A lot of students really struggle with this. And also, by the way, the path taken doesn't matter. In other words, the way that you got there actually doesn't matter when you do your work. It just matters the total work done divided by the charge. And there you get this thing called potential difference. It's going to make more sense, I think, when circuits are involved. But at least this is just a general definition. And finally, I think the most interesting one, and this can be an IB question, I've seen this show up many times, something like this, what's the kinetic energy of an electron accelerated across a potential? So what we're going to say is, imagine we have two plates. Can you imagine I have like a charge plate here and a charge plate here? And because of that, an electron is going to be accelerated. So the question would be like, you know, maybe the question is, how fast is that, accel uh, is that electron going by the time it's done accelerating? And this is the very definition of this word electron volt. And this shows up in other topics as well. So when we're talking about um, particle physics, if you do the option called relativity, if you're looking at atomic physics and this famous equation E equals mc squared, we often put the energy in terms of electron volts. And you'll see why in a second. So on your exams, they don't actually give you what one electron volt is. So we have to think very, very carefully about this. So I'm going to show you a little trick here, and this trick is awesome. I'm going to start off by saying 1 EV. So 1, if I want EV, I want 1 electron, 
right? So that means I want one charge of an electron, so one charge, times uh, one volt. So we're going to write this down now, you know, uh, actually, maybe what I'll do is I'll cut this piece right here, at least. I'll just say E times V. In other words, the charge times the potential difference. And it turns out this right here is a unit of energy. This right here is. This is an energy. Although it looks like I just wrote like a hipster mustache here, but I, I mean it to denote the energy here. So this is a form of energy, E times V. That's the one thing you sort of have to know. What I like is that the definition uh, of electron volt sort of comes into its word. One electron times one volt. That's what I love about. And remember, uh, we, know, we know something that's measured in energy. We know the kinetic energy of something. We can say it's half mv squared. So this is the kinetic energy of this is, I could say, EK of that electron. So if I knew the charge of that electron, I knew the potential difference, I knew the mass of the electron, which I can look up, then I can tell the speed of it. Or I could be asked, you know, what's its energy? Then I would just, you know, E times V is the energy. But maybe I want to find the mass of an object or the velocity of it. So this is much more powerful, this one equation here. I think this is the really key equation here to try to look at is EV equals half MV squared. Now, what is actually one electron volt? This is actually really awesome. Watch this. If I take one, maybe I'll do it in a different color here. I'll do it, uh, yeah, we'll do it in blue here. So I take one electron. This is what I have this time. One electron across one volt. If that makes any sense. Well, then I have to look up the charge of an electron. And if I look at my data book, I can see the charge of an electron, little e, is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That's just one electron charge. And this thing right here times one volt. It turns out you can just multiply this. Now look very carefully, what do I end up with? I end up with 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, but I have coulombs times volts. We need another unit for that. And it turns out a coulomb times volt is also a joule. You'll see that back here, look. We've sort of proved it back here, look. Didn't we say that one volt right here uh, is a joule per coulomb? Can you see that? So that means a joule is, uh, if you imagine this joule right here by itself, um, you know that this is like a joule divided by C, right? That's what this really is looking like. And that means if I want a joule by itself, I could put the coulomb over there. So see a coulomb volt is equal to a joule? I don't know if you believe me, but it is. So it turns out one coulomb times one volt is a joule. So watch very carefully, and this is the sort of magical thing that ends up coming from here. So you can see that one electron volt is just, again, one electron times one volt. Now remember though, E is actually a number. So E is a charge of an electron. It's the elementary charge. Remember, charge is quantized. So all other charges you find in nature are multiples of this. So all I have to do is say one EV equals 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, which is the charge of an electron, but because of the magic of the units here, a coulomb volt equals a joule. So this is like my conversion factor here. This is what I need in order to convert from one electron volt to one joule. You either multiply by this magic number or divide, depending on what you want your units to do.